We've been interacting with technology by way of our hands and fingers for decades now. First there was the keyboard, then the mouse, then the touchscreen. But they all took advantage of our evolutionary ability to manipulate objects with our digits. You see a thing, you touch it, and something changes. By now it's second nature, but with touchscreens we added a whole new language. Suddenly it wasn't just tapping and clicking, there was also pinching, zooming, three-finger slides. But we're still just basically tapping on glass. So what comes after the glass? One idea is to take touch out of the equation entirely. This is the Google Glass approach. Just drop the information in front of their faces and let them talk, or in case of emergency, tap a sidebar. People are trying to bring this same technology to contacts, so you wouldn't even need to wear a headset. But so far, it's only at a resolution of one pixel per contact. Big screens like the ones in Minority Report look fun. Waving your arms to move big graphics around. They have a lot of problems, too. We do a lot of interacting with computers, and big gestures get tiring fast. But maybe those gestures don't need to be so flamboyant. Maybe smaller movements can work. Gesture tracking tech can detect a hand in midair and tell which part is the finger and which part is the palm. So when you spin your hand around, it can spin the graphic around to match it. It still lacks feedback, but maybe that comes next. Something like a nano coating that vibrates to fake the feedback of what you're not really touching, or neural trickery that makes it feel like something's really in your hand. The thing is, we've always been really good with our hands. When you hold something, whether it's a hammer or a joystick, it gives you a lot of information. We can feel resistance and weight and make really precise finger movements to give directions that would be impossible otherwise. That's how we separated ourselves evolutionarily. We were the species with the right fingers to use tools. And as we got smarter about how we interact with computers, we'll get better and better at honing in on those strengths. It's one reason why the interfaces of tomorrow might look an awful lot like the past.